I'm sorry, yo. I'm sorry I betrayed your trust. I'm sorry I pushed you all away. I'm sorry I made a clown of myself. I apologize. I wish it didn't have to be this way. These were the last words of a young star whose fire got put out before its time. A few days after he said these words, he disappeared. His body was later found in a nearby river. He had self-drowned and sent himself to the afterlife. His name was Etika. He was a YouTube star, had millions of followers and subscribers, and lived a comfortable life. Had influence beyond his age? So why? Why would he choose to unalive himself? This is the story of the famous YouTube star, Etika, and the events that led to his tragic demise. Originally named Daniel Amofa, Etika was born on May 12, 1990, in Brooklyn, New York. His dad, Ouraku Amofa, was a politician and lawyer from Kibi, Ghana, while his mom was Sabrina Amofa. Growing up, Desmond mentioned that he felt a bit distant from his father, who was heavily involved in politics in Ghana during the 1990s. In retrospect, this could be the reason why his life turned out the way it did, but let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Desmond had an older brother named Randy, who sadly passed away in 2010 due to an asthma attack, yet another reason to carry a load of trauma for the most part of his life. However, on a brighter note, he also had a half-brother named Cardinal Valeri, who he loved dearly and perhaps filled up some of the void in his heart regarding his other brother passing away. But Desmond spent his entire life in Brooklyn, New York. This was home to him, and his life became more shaped by the things he saw around his environment, good or bad. When it was time to go to school, he attended Shell Bank Junior High School for a year, but was pulled out by his mom because of frequent fights with other students. Later on, he attended Urban Assembly School for Law and Justice, a small, law-themed college preparatory public high school. He graduated in 2008, but all the while, Desmond grew up seeing the world a little differently than an average person. He had a lot of talents and interests that he wasted no time to exploit whenever he had the chance. The cumulative effect of all of these things would eventually trigger an amazing thing in his life, but at the time, he had no idea. One of his many interests and passions was modeling and rapping. Growing up in the Bronx or Brooklyn, Desmond had become influenced by rap, and he aspired to become a rapper, but in the meantime, he was determined to show the world what he could do. From 2007 to 2009, he showcased his rap skills through videos under the alias Iceman, and even dropped an independently produced mixtape called Written in Ice in 2007. Furious. Y'all rappers is retro. That means inferior. They messing with the Iceman? Is they serious? All of these were before his 20s. However, in his early 20s, Desmond decided to venture into yet another field, modeling, a passion he pursued until 2015. However, he eventually stepped away from modeling simply because his interest for the craft was waning fast. But make no mistake, Desmond had all it took to become a model. Notably, he was active on Model Mayhem, a modeling and social media platform where he described himself as quite tall revealing that his last height measurement was an impressive six feet six inches. In the year 2003, Desmond got hooked with the video game Sonic Battle. He played the game so much that it almost became an addiction. It was his coping mechanism for dealing with life and his escape from all the problems and challenges around him. But the more he played, the better at it he got. Soon enough, he noticed something no one else has, a cheat code. He discovered in the game there was a cheat code titled Ekita. Not only did he share his findings with those around him, he also decided to adopt a new username where he decided to switch the T and the K, creating the username Etika because he simply liked that result better. All Etika did was share his passions with the world on YouTube, but soon enough, it would all pay off for him. Before his notable YouTube career, Amifa initially used the YouTube account tr one Iceman. However, in 2012, he made a strategic move by creating a brand new YouTube account, adopting the username EW Network, meaning Etika World Network. This channel became the hub for his gaming and reaction streams. Shockingly, the EW Network quickly gained traction, and by the time the channel was terminated in 2018, Amofa had built a substantial following, amassing more than 800,000 subscribers. Undeterred by the termination, he swiftly rebounded by creating a replacement YouTube channel, 
Etika Farfax. This new venture proved to be immensely successful, attracting a staggering 300,000 subscribers within months. Even his original TR1 Iceman channel, despite the challenges, continued to thrive, reaching over 130,000 subscribers. Altogether, Amofa's impact on the YouTube community was undeniable as he accumulated over 1 million subscribers across his multiple channels. This growth showcased not only his resilience in the face of setbacks, but also the unwavering support and enthusiasm of his dedicated fan base. Amofa's content was predominantly centered around the Nintendo universe, reflecting his passion for gaming. Originally focused on gaming news, his content evolved into Let's Play videos of various Nintendo games, coupled with reaction videos to gaming announcements. His reaction videos, especially those of Nintendo Direct presentations, became iconic for their exaggerated and energetic style, often featuring moments like him falling out of his chair in elated shock or tossing objects around his room. In 2014, Amofa's channel gained significant popularity with reaction videos covering new information about the then-unreleased Super Smash Bros. 4. Notably, his reaction to the reveal of Mewtwo as a DLC fighter became a viral sensation, becoming his most viewed video on EW Network. Many. Mewtwo! Mewtwo! Oh my god! Mewtwo! Mewtwo! and even earning a retweet from the game's creator, Masahiro Sakurai. A similar success followed in 2018 with a viral reaction to the announcement of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Amifa's channel continued to grow as he diversified content, incorporating reactions to gaming news and YouTube drama. Despite his success, he faced challenges, including dealing with chargebacks, or fake donations, resulting in significant processing fees. He affectionately dubbed his fans the Joy-Con Boys, a nod to Nintendo Switch controllers known as Joy-Con. The term originated from a viral live stream in 2016, where Amofa claimed to have a Nintendo Switch before its release. This led to some controversy when it was revealed that the model he displayed was 3D printed, but the Joy-Con Boys remained a strong and supportive community. Amofa had a distinctive sign-off, concluding his videos with the signature catchphrase, Take care of yourselves, and of course, as goddamn usual, please have yourself a damn good one. I'm gonna go find that date. In Japan, he was playfully referred to as Guile Kun, due to his hairstyle resembling the character Guile from Street Fighter. While Nintendo content was his primary focus, Amofa delved into playthroughs of games from various publishers, showcasing his diverse gaming interests. He was also an avid fan of anime and Japanese culture, frequently streaming himself watching series like Attack on Titan with entertaining commentary. Overall, Desmond Etika Amofa left an indelible mark on the gaming community with his vibrant personality and diverse content. At this point of his life, everything was good and he could ask for nothing else, but soon enough, things would begin to go sideways and spell the beginning of doom for young Etika. During the final months of his life, Amofa displayed increasingly erratic behavior and signs of mental distress, capturing media attention and causing concern among his fans and the YouTube community. One notable incident occurred on October 23, 2018, when he was temporarily suspended from Twitter for using a racial slur in a tweet the N-word, to be precise. In response, he uploaded a video defending his use of the word, arguing that it had evolved from a tool of hatred to a form of love within the black community. Two days later, he uploaded explicit content to his YouTube channel, resulting in its termination. And he was also banned from Twitch that year for using a homophobic slur during a stream. It was at this point that Etika began to act a little strange. Following the termination, he posted cryptic and concerning messages on social media, hinting at thoughts about his demise, causing panic among his followers. After a three-day hiatus, he checked into a mental hospital where he claimed to have received medical examination and anxiety medication. He apologized on his subreddit and cited issues with YouTube's policies as a reason for shutting down his channel. However, even in the midst of all of these challenges, Amofa launched a new YouTube channel, Etika FFX, in October 2018, aiming for more authentic content. But sadly, 
This channel was also terminated in April 2019 due to explicit material. His distress escalated, and he posted alarming tweets related to unaliving himself, leading to his detainment and hospitalization. Throughout April, Amofa continued to exhibit erratic behavior, posting cryptic messages, including offensive language that he later deleted. It almost seemed like all he cared about was his own life, and he was so bold and open about it, it began to raise a lot of concerns. It got so bad that one day, the police showed up at his house. Obviously, Etika was so upset about this, he began to live stream. All right. Also, he began to talk some more about how the revolution was here, and he would fight it. In essence, his rants didn't make much logical sense, a pointer to the fact that he was deeply disturbed. All of these culminated in his removal from his apartment and hospitalization. However, after being released, Amofa was interviewed by Daniel Keemstar Keem. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, the Antichrist. I've come to purge the planet of all human life. I will be dropping nuclear missiles very, very soon on every single human being. Death means nothing. Why are you all so scared of death for? It means absolutely zero. He was detained again for assaulting a police officer after the interview. Amofa was not arrested, but taken to a hospital. Released on May 14th, he continued making reaction videos. His erratic behavior was perceived by some as humorous, and videos of his encounter with the police were posted online with laughing reactions. Rumors circulated among fans that his controversies were part of an alternate reality game stemming from a stream in September 2017 and gaining prominence after his first channel termination. The point remained that no one knew for sure what was going on with him, but soon the climax of the entire story occurred, and it was sad as can be. At the stroke of midnight on June 20th, 2019, a poignant pre-recorded video titled, I'm Sorry, surfaced on Amofa's TR1 Iceman channel. In the video, Amofa traverses the streets of New York City, bearing his soul about the struggles with his mental health, grappling with unaliving thoughts and delving into the detrimental aspects of social media. His heartfelt message includes apologies for unintentionally pushing people away and words of caution regarding the pitfalls of excessive social media usage. The video's description features a heartfelt note from Amofa, mirroring the remorseful tone expressed in the video. Unfortunately, YouTube removed the video, citing a violation of its community guidelines Tragically, after leaving some personal belongings on the pedestrian walkway, Amofa took a fateful leap from the Manhattan Bridge, leading to his untimely drowning. Concerns escalated when Amofa was reported missing to the New York Police Department. In the wake of his disappearance, fellow internet personalities and devoted fans reached out in an attempt to extend support and express gratitude. Amofa's abandoned belongings discovered on the pedestrian walkway of the Manhattan Bridge, painted a haunting picture. The recovered items included a backpack, wallet, laptop bag, cell phone, a change of clothes, and a Nintendo Switch. Four days later, on the evening of June 24th, a body was sighted near Pier 16, approximately half a mile down the East River from where Amofa's belongings were found. The discovery was swiftly reported to the NYPD. By the morning of June 25th, Emergency services recovered the body and confirmed it to be Amofa, declaring him deceased at the point of retrieval. The Office of Chief Medical Examiner officially confirmed the cause of death, as by self-induced drowning the next day. Desmond Etika Amofa left the world at the age of 29, leaving behind a community deeply impacted by the loss of a vibrant and talented individual. Amofa's tragic death brought to the forefront the scrutiny of social media platforms in handling content from users displaying signs of mental distress or contemplating their demise. YouTube, in its decision to remove Amofa's final video, emphasized the standard practice of taking down such content to mitigate the risk of copycat acts. Following the news of his passing, Amofa swiftly became the top trending topic on Twitter globally, flooded with tributes from grief-stricken fans. Various prominent YouTubers, including Felix Kjellberg, also known as PewDiePie, 
and James Charles expressed their condolences recognizing the human side of content creators and emphasizing the need for understanding and compassion. Amofa's death prompted widespread discussions on social media about the mental health challenges faced by content creators. Influencers such as Asmongold and Corex Kenshin highlighted the negative impact of online negativity on creators' well-being. Um, basically, here's how I feel about it. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a real shame whenever somebody like that, uh, you know, decides to himself. I mean, like, that's kind of like, obviously, like, I mean, what else is there really to say there? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't need to repeat myself there. Uh, I mean, it's just really kind of a shame because I, I saw, you know, I remember watching one of this guy's videos back in, like, I don't know, 2016 or something. And he seemed like just to be like such a happy and like vibrant person that was just like full of life. Fiona Nova, a content creator and friend of Amafa, condemned fans for treating his mental health struggles as jokes, and Cardona revealed Amafa's attraction to the vitriol he received. Journalists and mental health researchers delved into Amofa's posted videos, identifying signs of his troubled state that were unfortunately misconstrued as jokes by some viewers. The situation underscored the pressing need for more research into the effects of social media on content creators' mental health. Patricia Hernandez of Polygon reflected on the tragic outcome, expressing a sense of helplessness and the need for collective responsibility in recognizing and addressing mental health concerns on online platforms. Keem, who interviewed Amofa on Drama Alert, faced scrutiny from some fans who blamed him for Amofa's demise. Keem later shared texts allegedly sent by Amofa's mother defending the interview as something Etika wanted to do. Despite this, accusations persisted, with internet personality Ethan Klein suggesting Keem's influence in Amofa's death in a May 2020 video. Keem vehemently denied responsibility citing Amofa's family's statements and criticized Klein for exploiting the tragedy for personal attacks. The aftermath of Amofa's death underscored the complex and delicate interplay between mental health, social media, and the responsibilities of online platforms and content creators alike. Amofa's passing sparked an outpouring of tributes across various social media platforms, commemorating his impactful career. In December 2019, the New York Times Magazine recognized Amofa's influence as a YouTuber, highlighting his ability to blur the lines between reality and content, stating that he remained true to himself until the very end. Kotaku included him in their list of top gamers of the year, emphasizing the discussions his death ignited about the impact of social media on mental health. BBC labeled the news of Amofa's death as one of the biggest technology stories of 2019 emphasizing the enduring remembrance of him throughout the year. Fans and fellow YouTubers rallied on social media, urging YouTube to re-upload Amifa's final video for memorialization. Change.org petitions amassed hundreds of thousands of signatures, advocating for the restoration of Amofa's original channel, and even proposing his burial at YouTube headquarters, as per his earlier livestream wish. Criticism was directed at YouTube for omitting a tribute to Amofa in the 2019 YouTube Rewind, prompting PewDiePie to create his version with a homage to Amofa and other deceased creators. Days after his passing, fans erected a touching memorial on the pedestrian walkway of the Manhattan Bridge, adorned with letters, fan art, Twizzlers, Nintendo-related items. The Super Smash Bros. community organized a tournament in his honor featuring the character Ridley from Metroid, a game Amofa frequently played. Posthumously, he received the Best Reaction Award at the third annual Smashies Awards. Fans noticed the inclusion of characters Amofa favored in the second DLC Fighter Pass for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, causing him to trend on Twitter. Amofa's legacy extended beyond tributes as various fundraisers for mental health charities emerged. YouTuber Abe Hunter transformed Amofa's website into a fundraiser, raising over $11,000 for the National Alliance on Mental Illness NAMI. PewDiePie and Jack Black initiated a GoFundMe campaign, streaming themselves playing Minecraft to raise funds for NAMI, resulting in a total donation exceeding $30,000. Hunter, along with Double A, collaborated with mural artist BK Fox and graffiti artists Kestatum and JMZ Walls 
to create a 40 feet long mural in Bushwick, Brooklyn, dedicated to Amofa. The mural aimed to celebrate his life and raise awareness about mental health issues. Dutch YouTuber Reversal orchestrated a campaign to add the mural's location as a virtual poke stop in Pokemon Go. In 2022, another mural dedicated to Amofa was organized by the same team. An Indiegogo campaign raised funds for the Jed Foundation, offering contributors custom-made Etika-themed Joy-Con shells named Eticons. The campaign garnered over $10,000 by the end of 2019. Despite further sales being halted due to a cease and desist letter from Nintendo, all in all, there is no doubt that this rich but tragic story teaches a lesson about mental health and how more people should care when the signs begin to manifest. If you're watching this and Etika's struggles seem familiar to you, please do yourself and loved ones a favor and seek help. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to subscribe and let us know in the comments 